So moving on in our tour then, let's go to Neptune. So we'll jump out to the farthest gas giant. Um, so Neptune has a moon called Triton. This is its largest moon. Triton is pretty interesting because it is rocky and icy. So it has a relatively high density compared to the just right, like straight up ice moons. Um, and it's also in a retrograde orbit, meaning the orbit is not in the same direction as Neptune rotates. And it's also not in the equatorial plane. So um, it's likely that Triton is a captured object from the Kuiper belt. It basically came from the same place that Pluto is currently. And for that reason, Triton and Pluto are very similar. So um, it has a thin nitrogen atmosphere, which Pluto also has. Um, it doesn't experience tidal heating from Neptune, but it still has geysers of nitrogen um, where the, the solid nitrogen on its surface is turning into a gas. So these nitrogen geysers, um, the evidence of them are these kind of dark splotches on its surface where nitrogen has um, gone from its solid state to its um, gaseous state directly. Based on um, Triton, this is this should say Triton all the way through. So based on Triton's eccentricity, would you say that it's very circular or very elliptical? Okay. Yes. So as a review, a perfect circle would be zero, and a perfect straight line would be eccentricity of one. Titan's orbit is actually very circular. So this is pretty much the reason why it doesn't experience tidal heating from um, Neptune because it doesn't have any um, changing tidal force. So there, there would be a tidal force that could cause it to be flexed, but it wouldn't flex more and less, more and less in different parts of its orbit. And so if no, no flexing, then no tidal heating, even if there's a tidal force. So, I hope that's making sense. There can be a tidal force, but not tidal flexing if there's not a high eccentricity. So that means that we have to explain those nitrogen geysers in some other way. Okay, I see a question. Why is Triton classified as a moon instead of a dwarf planet if it was captured from the Kuiper belt? Um, yes, it's because it orbits a planet and not a star. Um, why would certain objects get captured and others would not? Random events, um, random changes in gravitation. Who knows? But yeah, sometimes things get thrown off course by the gravity of the of Jupiter and Saturn. And then if they happen to get captured, then they get captured. All right. So sublimation is how we explain the nitrogen geysers on. Triton, since it's not tidally heated, there's no internal heat source that's driving those geysers. But instead, it's just that um, when sunlight hits the nitrogen on its surface, then it turns directly into a gas because there's not enough um, atmospheric pressure for it to become a liquid first. So we've seen sublimation before, right? Um, the carbon dioxide in Mars's polar ice caps sublimates, goes from solid to gas, and then deposits goes from gas to solid. Um, in that case, for carbon dioxide, we call it dry ice. And on Earth, too, carbon dioxide sublimates. It does not melt into a liquid. It just goes from solid to gas. Um, water can sublimate, but only at low air pressures. Um, and nitrogen can sublimate, but only at very, very low air pressures. So it happens on Triton, um, but it doesn't happen very many other places. You have to have a pretty low pressure and low temperature environment. 